What's up everyone and welcome to our first topic. This is all about new language features in which we'll explore some of the features that the JavaScript versions ES6 and above have brought to the table. So we're going to be focusing on just the brand new and most important features that these versions have brought. We'll bring each one up as kind of a list off the different items it's brought and explain one by one what each of those items are going to do. Again, we're going to go through each version since ES5. So we're going to go 6, 7, 8 and 9. And then we'll explore things feature by feature and of course version by version. So starting with ES6, this is where a lot of the changes really started to happen. One of the new things is default parameters. This allows us to add default values to our function parameters so that we can avoid passing them in when calling on functions. There's the idea of string interpolation added as well. This allows us to pass values into strings and convert them in real time rather than breaking our strings up. As well, multi-line strings further prevent us from breaking strings up by allowing us to build strings over multiple lines. There's the idea of constants, which are essentially values or variables that do not change. And classes is actually a huge one coming to JavaScript or that has already come into the JavaScript ecosystem. This allows us to add object oriented behavior in JavaScript. Next up, we have a whole host of highly efficient and highly functional array functions introduced in this version. We have also arrow functions, which are ways to simplify our function syntax and create really quick functions um, that have very fast and quick to implement functionality. Basically makes that process even faster. There's the idea of deconstructing, which is essentially allowing our compiler to interpret values without us explicitly having to state them, especially when dealing with dictionaries and objects. There's also the concept of promises. Now promises is a little bit more complex, so we'll be exploring promises in much greater detail. Essentially, they provide a clean and safe way to guarantee that something will have a value, especially when paired with asynchronous functions. Now in ES7, we have the array.prototype.includes function. So this is just yet another array function. It is a way to, to just determine if an array contains a value. There's also the exponentiation operator. This is essentially just raising something to the power of something else. For example, we can now do five to the power of two to get 25 rather than just having to multiply things out a bunch of times. In ES8, we have asynchronous functions. This is again a massive new feature. Asynchronous functions are functions that do not work one after the other, that would be synchronous. Instead, they work in parallel and allow us to execute multiple functions all at the same time. There's also the concept of shared memory and atomics. This is actually a little beyond the scope of this course, so we won't really be talking too much about that. There are object.values and object.entries. This is a way to treat our objects kind of like dictionaries, where in which we can get the parameter names and the actual, or rather the field names and the actual values associated with them by either values or entries respectively. There's also the string.padend and pad start functions. This is just a way to add extra characters to the end or to the beginning of a string. Object.getOwnPropertyDescriptors descriptors this is a way to print out a big string description of an object in all of its entities. And there are also trailing commas. Now this isn't huge, but it's nice um, if in case we forget to close off or rather end a comma if we're listing a bunch of items, it doesn't matter if we include that final extra one. So ES9 is our last one. First up, we have rejects changes. So this is regular expression changes. To be honest, I personally don't like using regular expressions when possible. And I found I actually don't have to use them too much. So we won't really be covering the regular expressions changes so much. However, if you are super interested, you can definitely check those out. ES9 has added a bunch of support. There are also rest and spread properties. These are really cool. They allow us to um, essentially build up ranges of values through using uh, three ellipses put together. And this allows the compiler to kind of interpret what values come next in a series of values. After this, we have asynchronous iteration. That's actually the last big one and just 
lends more powerful support to our asynchronous functionality. So we'll explore most of these features, but not all of them. Some of them are just beyond the scope of this course because we're trying to keep things fast and to the point. However, as much as possible, we will incorporate them into our general JavaScript intro concepts. So next up, we'll be actually installing the tools that we'll need and learning how to set up and run our project. So stay tuned for that. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next section.